I just want to start this video off by asking a question. Were you confused at the end of Deadly Illusions? Did Grace kill Mary? Did Mary kill Grace? Who killed Elaine? Who slashed the tires? Did Grace actually stab Tom? How much of this movie is in Mary's head? And what does the ending mean? Well, I'm here to help you out. A lovely commenter suggested that I watch this, and I watched it, and I took notes, and I feel like I have a pretty strong theory on what actually happened in this movie. I know this movie is getting so much hate on Twitter, on YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes, and I certainly understand why. It's not Fight Club, Mandy, or Shutter Island, we certainly know that, but I want to give this movie as much respect as I would give any other movie as I let you know what I think the ending means and every major detail leading up to it. So I'm going to break this explanation down using two phases. Phase one will be motivation, where we'll discuss Grace's disorder, Grace's motivations, Mary's delusions, Mary's motivations, Mary's career, and Grace and Mary's intimacy. Phase two will be investigation, where we'll discuss Elaine's murder, Tom's stabbing, Grace and Tom's sex scene, the tire slashing, and the final scene that had everyone super confused and much more. And if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and a comment. It helps so much. And if you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Okay, phase one. Motivation. I want to start this analysis off by looking into the mental conditions of our two main characters. Let's start with Mary. Mary has a mental condition called delusional disorder, formerly known as paranoid disorder. And this mental illness is defined as the inability to tell what's real from what is imagined. Mary confirms that she has this condition when she tells her kids. When mommy writes, sometimes the things in her mind become so vivid that she can't tell the difference between the imaginary and the real. So when Mary writes her story, stories, she inevitably begins to mix up her real life with the stories she is writing. And Mary also inevitably uses her mental illness to fuel her success and create the narrative behind every single book she writes. Her book series that allowed her career to take off is actually called the Delirium series. Delirium meaning serious disturbance in mental abilities that result in confused thinking and reduced awareness of surroundings. And this all makes perfect sense because once Mary finally overcomes her writer's block, she she begins to have odd visions and vivid fantasies that she can't tell are real or fake. Now let's move on to Grace. Grace's mental illness is called Dissociative Identity Disorder, aka Multiple Personality Disorder. This condition is defined as the presence of two or more distinct personality states within one person. Grace developed this condition as she grew up in a home of 10 children and two abusive parents. We can also see that Grace's condition is hereditary since her aunt also showcases two personalities, a very mean one and a very warm one when Mary visited her. So as a result of her upbringing, Grace developed a second personality named Margaret. Within Grace's mind, Margaret is best friends with Grace, but when Grace meets Mary and Tom, Margaret feels threatened that she is losing her best friend, Grace. So I just want to clarify what the motivations are for both characters. Mary's motivation for why she would commit such wicked crimes is that she may act out the new story she is writing in real life, and she may not be able to tell if what she experiences is fact or fiction. Grace's motivation for committing these crimes comes from her second personality, Margaret, who wants to keep Grace close to her and eliminate any new friends of Grace who Grace may become more attached to. It's Mary's deadly illusions, her delusions, that cause her to have these dreamy sexual fantasies with Grace, who she's clearly attracted to. You could argue that Mary was being drugged because she does eat something or drink something every single time before the they have a sexual encounter, but I think that's just a red herring. I just don't see a reason why Innocent Grace would want to do that, or why her second personality, Margaret, would have any reason to do that either. If it was Margaret, I feel like she would just kill Mary the first time after she drugged her, and have Grace all to herself again. Phase 2 investigation. My first question that once answered will make the rest of the video a lot easier to explain is who killed Elaine? Grace or Mary? I think it was Grace. Here's why. I think the therapy notes that we see as evidence for Elaine's murder were written by Grace, not Elaine. My proof of this is at the bottom of the notes it says 10 a.m. Mary claimed that this therapy meeting never happened, saying that is the time, 10 a.m., that I met her at the gym. If Mary was just imagining going to the gym with Elaine and actually had this therapy session with 
Elaine at 10 a.m. and killed Elaine, this would be very easy for the cops to find out. They could simply go to the gym that Elaine and Mary worked out at and ask if they were signed in at 10 a.m. on that day. And also, there must be some indication of time on that security camera. If Elaine and Mary weren't signed in at the gym at 10 a.m. on that day, then Mary did do it and she would go to jail. But clearly, in the end, we see that Grace was arrested as the killer and imprisoned at the psych ward. Grace's second personality, Margaret, wanted to frame Mary for killing Elaine so that Mary would be imprisoned and Margaret would have Grace all to herself again. So yeah, Grace killed Elaine. The next big question is, who stabbed Tom? To me, this is simple. Grace, or more specifically, Margaret. Grace was developing a great friendship with Tom, and I think Margaret felt jealous of him too. So, soon enough, Margaret began to become more prevalent in Grace's outward personality, and try to seduce Tom and lure him in enough to finally kill him. Also, like I said before, Grace is the one who was arrested and put in the psych ward. You could argue that Mary framed Grace in a delusional episode trying to replicate her newest story, but we see Tom is alive in the next scene with Mary, and he would know whether it was Grace or his wife that stabbed him. So the next question would be, did Grace and Tom have sex in the kitchen? I would certainly say no, simply based on the reliability of Tom's perception. Tom never showed any signs of mental illness or split personality or delusion, so I don't think he would agree to have blindfolded sex with Grace in the middle of the kitchen when his wife is sleeping next door. And Mary just went to sleep during this scene, so it's literally the perfect time for her to have a paranoid dream like this. You could argue that Grace drugged Tom, but if she drugged him, he would be perfectly fine and sober at dinner right after Mary wakes up. Okay, so who slashed the bike tires? I feel like this is the simplest one. Easily Grace, because if it were Mary, what would her motivation be to randomly do this? Like I see no reason for Mary to randomly slash her own tires at this moment in the film. I certainly see why Grace would do it, better yet, why Margaret would do it. Grace and Mary had their most wholesome moment in the film as Mary read Grace a poem by the river. I feel like Margaret's jealousy is at its highest height height at this point in the film, and she would definitely do something as impulsive as slash the bike tires in order to ruin such a perfect moment. Now the final question, the ending. Who walked out of that building? I 100% think it's Grace. Here's why. In the final act of the film, we see the receptionist reading a copy of Mary's book and asks her, working on a new book in the series, Miss Morrison? Mary says, actually, no, I'm doing something different that I've wanted to do for a long time. I believe when she says this, she is claiming that she plans to rebuild her relationship with Grace and thank Elaine for pushing her to complete the book, which we see her doing in the next scene. Some viewers may claim that Mary was referring to killing Grace and acting out her latest story in real life, but I really do don't think Mary killed Grace for this major reason. Mary walked into the building without any disguise or face covering, and she walked out in the same clothing but covering her face. To me, that's a dead giveaway that it wasn't Mary that killed Grace, because why would you walk in without covering up, but walk out covering up? It's just not logical at all to me. I feel like you should cover up your face the whole time if you want no one to know that it's you. What I do believe is that Grace killed Mary. More specifically, it was Margaret, Grace's second person who killed Mary as she had always hoped and walks out fulfilling her goal, finally able to live life alone with no one but Grace. All right, that's my analysis. Please let me know in the comments what your thoughts and interpretations were. I would love to read them and discuss. I hope you subscribe so I can see you again. And thank you so much for watching. See you later.